To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns On turning one down with a plough in April 1786 Wee modest crimson-tipped flower Thou's met me in an evil hour For I mon crash among the stour thy slender stem To spare thee now is past my power Thy bonny gem Alas, it is no thy neighbour sweet, the bonny lark companion meet, bending thee mang the dewy wheat with sprecked breast, when upward, springing blithe to greet the purpling east. Cold blew the bitter biting north upon thy early humble birth, yet cheerfully thou glinted forth amid the storm, scarce reared above the parent earth thy tender form. The flaunting flowers or gardens yield, high sheltering woods and was mon shield, but thou beneath the random beel the clodder stain adorns the histy stibble field, unseen, alone. There in thy scanty mantle clad, thy snowy bosom sunward spread, thou lifts thy unassuming head in humble guise, but now the share uptears thy bed. And lo, thou lies. Such is the fate of the artless maid, sweet floweret of the rural shade, by love's simplicity betrayed and guileless trust, till she, like thee, all soiled is laid, lo, ye the dust. Such is the fate of the simple bard, on life's rough ocean luckless starred, unskilful he to note the card of prudent lore. Till billows rage and gales blow hard, and well no more. Such fate to suffering worth is given, who long with wants and woes has striven by human pride or cunning driven to misery's brink, till wrenched at every stay but heaven, he drowned, sink. Even thou who mourns the daisy's fate, that fate is thine. No distant date, stern ruins, ploughshares drives elate full on thy bloom, till crushed beneath the furrow's weight shall be thy doom. Standard English Translation To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns On Turning One Down with the Plough in April 1786 Small, modest, crimson-tipped flower, you have met me in an evil hour, for I must crush thee among the dust, your slender stem. To spare you now is past my power, you lovely gem. Alas, is not your neighbour sweet, the bonny lark companion meet, bending you amongst the dewy wet with a speckled breast, when upward springing blithe to greet the purpling east. Cold blew the bitter biting north upon your early humble birth, yet cheerfully you sparkled forth amid the storm, scarce reared above the parent earth your tender form. The flaunting flowers our gardens yield, high sheltering woods and walls must shield, but you beneath the random shelter of clod or stone adorns the bare stubble field, unseen alone. There in your scanty mantle clad, your snowy bosom sunward spread, you lift your unassuming head in humble guise. But now the ploughshare tears up your bed, and lo, you lie. Such is the fate of artless maid, sweet floweret of the rural shade, by love's simplicity betrayed and guileless trust, until she, like you, all soiled is laid, low in the dust. Such is the fate of simple bard, on life's rough ocean luckless starred, unskilled he note the card of prudent lore, till billows rage and gales blow hard and whelm him over. Such fate to suffering worth is given, who long with wants and woes is striven, by human pride or cunning driven to misery's brink, till wretched of every stay but heaven, 
he'd ruined, sink. Even you who mourns the daisy's fate, that fate is yours, no distant date. Stern ruins ploughshare drives elate, full on your bloom, till crushed beneath the furrow's weight shall be your doom.